Action, activate! Oh my gosh. What's going on? It's me, Gazbot, and strangely, it's Action Activate, a live episode. Why? Well, look who's with me. The big dog. It, it is I. Yeah. You you weren't supposed to be here. We weren't going to have an episode. What's going on? No offense to Gazbot or anybody else, but I would have preferred to not have an Action Activate this week. I would have uh, preferred Why, to be... What are you doing right now? I, I should be on a uh, beautiful beach in Hawaii, but I am not. I, uh, last week through, uh, working in person for the first time in like two and a half years, I got COVID. So, uh, I am here doing my due diligence of not <laughs> leaving my house. And, uh, I figure, you know, since we're here, may as well give the people what they want, hopefully. And, uh, you know, chat That's with you <laughs> in our, uh, in our weekly endeavors. Yeah. So we, Originally, we were going to skip this week, or maybe do I would do a little something, and then next week we're going to come back with Bloodlines of the Grid 2 review. Uh, so then we're like, well, why don't we do Bloodlines of the Grid this week, but it's not available yet. Uh, so we're like, well, let's just do a freeform Q&A. You know, you're not feeling very your, your full power. We weren't really planning on doing it, so we'll just kind of, hey, let's catch up and talk, and people could jump in and say, hey, and we got a bunch of people. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I'm uh, I'm surprised we got so many people as we did because I didn't really announce this because we were also waiting to see how well he felt because we weren't sure if we were able to do this today. So I literally was just like 45 minutes ago and not even on Facebook or anything, just on YouTube and Twitch. So for those guys that showed up, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. We have no agenda. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll probably talk about Power Rangers. Well, I guess we could talk about the big Power Rangers news, right? Uh, before we do, I yeah. like that we both have uh, band shirts on and didn't plan it. And they're not like mainstream bands. No, not at all. What? What's? Oh, oh, is that Cybertronic Spree? Yes, it is. Nice. You got that at the show. I did. Yeah. For those that don't know, Cybertronic Spree is a cover band that primarily covers songs from the 1986 animated Transformers movie. They do a few other songs, mostly 80s. I think they might even have an original or two. But they dress as Transformers, and they look really good. Yeah, they also, um, I got to see them live within the last six months. I forget exactly what it was. Wolf, Wolf. <coughs> and uh, they, uh, for certain songs, will like either do like a shortened version of a uh, of a TV show theme, like of different animated shows. Like I know they did Pokemon at one point. They oh, did nice. some other ones. Or they'll like midway through a song, there will be like a guitar solo. And then it's like, by the way, here's Mortal Kombat. And like. They're, they're awesome. Very if you cool. have the chance to see them, please do. Highly yeah. recommend uh, supporting them. But um, uh, yeah, go. I was like, well, my shirt is Guitar Wolf. Uh, you can see I saw them quite a few years ago now, wherever that is. Um, and they are a Japanese jet rock band from Japan. Um, and I've seen them twice, weirdly, being that they barely play outside of Japan. Um, but they kind of look like the Ramones. I mean, they wear all leather jackets and stuff. And they just play like fast, hard, punky kind of like, you know, rockabilly if they were playing as fast as a punk band, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in the Power Rangers world, yes, I just sent this to you like recently. Um, no ping. Well, there was an update. So the first one was that uh, Jenny Klein, I guess, has been confirmed to be the showrunner for the live action Power Rangers show, I believe is what they it is. did not say live action. They oh, said they the, the showrunner, the Netflix Power Rangers show okay, in the cinematic anything. universe yeah. is how they keep wording everything. Meanwhile, Jonathan Entwistle has supposedly been in charge of this whole thing for a while. He was going to be like the what's the guy that does all the Star Wars stuff? Um, not oh, John he's Favreau. no, he's like the Kevin Feige is tomorrow. Kevin Feige, yes, that's how they've been saying. Um, and he uh, supposedly like things changed on his profile and people like, what does this mean? Or and then this got announced. Everyone's like, it's over, but no pink spandex I'm looking at right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're saying Jonathan and whistle gives an update 
And the update is the new Power Rangers show that Jenny Klein and I are working on is firmly part of the new cinematic universe. Can't wait to share more information with everyone soon. Maybe some familiar faces in a brand new universe. So whatever is going on, he's still involved. Maybe he's overall in charge and she's running one show or whatever, or maybe who knows, but a lot of people were like, he's out, but I guess he's not out at least not yet. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is good. I, I think them, you know, keeping the show on Netflix makes sense. I don't know why there's that weird limbo of like every season was on Netflix, by the way, they're not, by the way, new seasons are on Netflix in the restaurant, it, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Hasbro, you do you contracts or contracts. I imagine that had to do with contracts that were yeah. set a while ago. Yeah. Um, but I think it's cool. We have that coming up. I would be shocked if we don't hear something at power Morphicon um, yeah. or some kind of update. I know that in recent years, since Hasbro took over Hasbro, sometimes likes to give information for that sometimes doesn't there's a well, weird balance here the 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 relationship of hasbro with power morphicon right yeah now. because for power morphicon is there's there's only a couple power rangers focused conventions for those that don't know uh ranger stop and power morphicon are the two big ones and power morphicon is the big one and historically they had partnerships with bandai and um, Toys R Us and like Saban or whoever or Nick, whoever's running it. And like the last one, Toys R Us had closed down and Bandai had lost the license. So it was this weird limbo. And now Hasbro owns everything and there hasn't been one since that happened. Yep. So we know that they have a partnership with Super 7 and there's going to be su some Super 7 exclusives of Power Rangers there. But that's a smaller company. They're based in San Francisco. I'm imagining Scott knows the guy that runs Super 7, you know, yeah. so that's kind of a no brainer. What is what's his connection with Hasbro? What's the in there? I, I have no idea. So yeah, yeah who knows? Um, let me see. If we got another. Hope you're working on something uh, new and fresh. Yeah, I, I here's what I think. There, I think hopefully they're working on something new and fresh for one of the shows. But if they're putting out two shows, one of them is going to be MMPR. Now I don't think that means it's going to be Austin St. John, but I think maybe the cartoon would be the place to do MMPR because it's got the recognizable costumes. It'll be appealing to kids who maybe don't even watch the current show, but know what those costumes are. I mean, I could see, and this is a huge pipe dream that I'm putting out there, but if they wanted to go for a, like mostly all ages power ranger show and like a more mature one, they yeah. could do like a coinless show from the mm. comics where it was the universe where Draken starts. And right. then they're like, and then here's all oh, the yeah, stuff that you didn't see. That's fine. That's technically MMPR, but like, yeah. Different, and then also yeah. in that, they, they could bring in all the other seasons they, if they want to. But I'm also fine with like, if they're, I mean, I love Sentai and I love the connection there. And there's a lot of good seasons and a lot of good actors I'd like to see come back. But if they're creating something whole cloth, they could make, they don't, I mean, I didn't love the legendary pictures movie. And that was another MMPR reboot, but like done in a weird way where they're not, they didn't really cash in on the familiarity. They're like, you know, yeah. or whatever. But like, make a new team, make a new Sentai team, you know, make a Power Rangers team. However, like, just make it all new. Like, yeah. You know, and then bring in past characters if you want. Just pretend like, you know, like this is the new season, but we're making it in America on Netflix for, you know, whatever. I mean, you could even take a note from the Ultraman anime of like, this is like something specific to this that pays right. homage to the stuff before, but is yes. very different in a ton of ways. Um, I would love if they had a Power Rangers Super Sentai crossover, uh, that would have to be way down the line. Cause they'd have to establish Power Rangers a little bit more firmly as its own unique brand. I think Hasbro's going to want to do that, but if in a few years they did that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the closest we ever got was Akiba Ranger where they had the powerful Rangers. Yeah. I, uh, I'm still watching Akiba Ranger. It's a funny speaking of Toku, um, in preparation, uh, thank you, Tony. I, I was actually going to bring up the comics in a sec as well. Um, speaking of Toku, last night in kind of like loose preparation, if we were going to talk this week, um, I watched uh, Ultraman X for the second time. Not the whole thing, but I'm a couple episodes in. And it's my, I guess, technically second or third Ultraman series. Because I have every other, them all, so you got it there. Every other Ultraman I've watched is with you, and it's like mm -hmm. seven or like original Ultraman. Right. And I think right. I watched a little bit of Leo. But uh, uh, we also watched, well, I've watched a lot of Ultra Q. I feel like we probably watched a few together. Not that that's Ultraman, but you know. Similar um, but different. But uh, it's cool. It's very hokey. 
So it's mm. one of those, like, I was watching a bunch of videos, because uh, I know I've brought it up before, but if anybody wants to watch free Toku, uh, there's a service called Tubi, T-U-B-I, that has some commercials, but it's awesome. I, th- there was Ultra X, Ultraman Red Blue, uh, Ultraman Zero, Ultraman Orb, a bunch of the movies. Like, there's a ton of stuff on there. There's Kamen Rider, there's Sentai. Yeah, a lot of stuff that it, you would have to pay to watch otherwise. If yeah. You could even do it. yeah. So that's why I was going on here and I watched a couple of videos of like, where's a good place to start without like ruining anything or like, you know, having to watch 40 years worth of content. And they're like, Ultraman X is pretty good. It's also the shortest at 25 episodes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> well, you so, said uh, but is it fun? Uh, yeah, it, it's cool. Um, the concept without, you know, spoiling too much is um it it's very like toy driven where it's like how do you get power ups oh well you have these little dolls that you can buy and you do it and then you power up yeah they're spark dolls that's funny because they did that in ginga and 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 they did it in ginga was this ginga x or whatever the sequel ginga Ginga s i think x is after ginga s okay so i guess they're just continuing the same well that's kind of cool though that like at least they're continuing the gimmick so it's not like Okay, throw out those henshin devices and get a whole new thing now. Because I know yeah. at some point they were doing cards, and like I know they change eventually. But three seasons of the same gimmick is is pretty good. Well, this one does both. At one point, he has a card that he then puts in that then like materializes a spark doll that he then like oh, hammers so it's on. Twofold, yeah. Yeah, okay. but again, I'm two two episodes in. But part of the reason I liked it, and I actually happen to have him in front of me, is I got. Uh, the SH okay. figure Ultraman X a while ago, That's and this is the claws and everything. Yeah, this is the bare bones version. The other one has his big. Uh, uh, it's not Gamera. It's it's like a similar name than Gamera. Oh, Ga- Gabora or a Gor- Gomora. G- Wait, what does it look? Well, Gamora is one. Gamora. Looks- it, it's Gamora armor. Okay, he looks like a brown kind of lizard yep. monster with a horn. Yeah. 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 But saying it, I'm like, I know I'm doing this wrong. So I got that because it's funny. It's very rare, especially years back, that Gazbot had to convince me to buy stuff. But this was one where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to buy it. And he said verbatim, you love things that have armored up special modes. And this is literally that. I yeah. do not understand why you would not buy this. And I'm like, yeah. no, you're not wrong. And then I got yeah. it. <laughs> but uh, I happen to get a loose one also later. So this is the one I have on my desk mm. where he's just... Uh, chilling and then in my shelf i have uh him with the armor but it's cool so far a lot of just very uh like mega force super mega force mcguffany like hey we got another key here you go and he's got a <laughs> yeah. new power up but it's cool so far um yeah different relationship than other ultra series that's all i'll say gotcha. um with the the protagonist but uh it's cool well, I like when they switch it up you know i mean like where they have yeah. different ways the humans and the ultras interact and stuff but also this one still has a science division and apparently this is like one of the last ones that does oh okay because i know kind of like with power rangers i feel like when they have the science division team that's like oh we're at high school like that's kind of a base you know and a lot of them have it but not all of them have it and they it comes in and out of favor you know yeah um most of the ones I've watched, they did have a science team, funny enough, even though I know that's not all of them. But I think th- this one came out in 2015, and apparently they, like, stopped it after that from the yeah. videos I watched. I'm just agreeing with Tony's comment of, like, there's no reason they can't adapt Sentai and make All-American, but yeah, you know, we'll see. Right, um, we got a I just, I just want more Power Rangers content that isn't, oh, like, me too. Uh, yeah, I would like to have – stack it on top instead of swapping it out. But Exactly. Uh, let, let me try to say the same. Uh, Gabu – Traya Torin. Gabu Traya Torin. Tyra. Tyra? I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Uh, But anyway. um, Oh, because it's that's the, um, not Dino Charge, but uh, Kyoryuger. Yep. Kyoryuger. Yeah, I'm getting them all mixed up. uh, Character. Anyway, uh, which ranger would you want to be in Power Rangers Legacy Wars? I would love to have Leo from Lost Galaxy. What about you guys? I don't remember who's in Legacy Wars. I have not played it in so long. I haven't played it in forever, but I would like uh, Omega Red um, from the comics if he's not already in it. Oh, would you want to be in? Um, I, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna guess Samurai Gold's not in it. He is and if not. He is. Wow. Well, yeah. See, because um, I think he was one of my supports. Okay. How about Robo Knight? Is he in it? I think he is. Yeah, I don't know who's in it, so I'll just uh, – how about 
How about SPD Green and he has like a buttery attack? He probably isn't, so good on you. Okay, there you go. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up with the comics is they're gearing up toward issue 100. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you're super behind on it, but I on am. the cover, we've seen more uh, more Rangers together than we have since uh, Shattered, Shattered Grid, Grid. And I'm, I- I'm super behind, so I'm not where it's at, but is it okay if I tell you who's on the cover? Uh, spoilers for anybody else that doesn't want to know. Stop listening for a minute. Go ahead. Tell me. Uh, so it's got the Omega Rangers. Okay. It's got the MMPR Rangers, all okay. seven of them, I believe. And okay. then in space red and in space silver. That's good. That's a good lineup. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to see how that ties in whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. The Omega Rangers were the alternate MMPR guys, right? Yes. So it's showing the Omega Rangers, but also both reds and both yellows and like all, all the different alternative MMPR people. No, it's showing the MMM. The little it's all seven. Oh, so it's green and white. Two greens and a white. One green and a white. One green. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I thought there were two greens now in the comic. They're not showing. Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't think so. <laughs> um, um Let's see. Samurai Ox gonna need Genji, the cat genie from Mystic Force. Okay, kind of um, cool. Mystic Force, uh, for those that have followed this, is the only season I have not watched one single episode of. That is not anything negative against it. Just in going through it, that was the last one. I haven't finished Overdrive, and I have never started um, Mystic Force, and that just happened out that way. But uh, yeah. I've heard I've heard mixed things about Mystic Force, but more good than bad. The worst part about Mystic Force that I can remember is the music. Okay. It's like actively terrible. Dur- the, the, you talking about the theme song or you mean like during the show? Mostly during the show. The theme song's not great. And the theme song is worse when you hear the Ron Wasserman like version that they turned down. Right. Well, yes, but I could get past a bad theme song. But is it a thing where like, oh, here's the big fight and the theme song kicks in and it's terrible? Is it like, oh, that? no, like it throughout it, there will be like, oh, let's listen to some music because somebody's a musician or a DJ or something. Right. And it's just like, ear noise mm-hmm. it's like stuff you would play to like extract information from another <laughs> just awful gotcha. yeah it's it's whenever i bring up stuff when we're reviewing dino fury of like i liked this music i always think of mystic force as my bar and i'm like oh i don't want to actively mute this all right cool wow that's the worst thing i've heard about that show i wonder if I, do other people either watching live or later in the comments do you agree that the not the theme song, but the music in the show of Mystic Force is some of the worst, if not the worst. Pretty oh, bad. Let me see. We got another comment here. Um, a question, rather. Well, comment, yeah. If there's one thing I know that would have made Super Mega Force a little bit better is if they played the season's theme when they transformed. Yes. Uh, uh, let's say Jungle Fury, for example, which, of course, I oh. agree with. Um, I've seen fan, like on YouTube, I've seen fan edits where they do that when they get into the certain Megazord. User. And yeah, absolutely. Why not put those little stings in? Maybe it's a rights thing. I Maybe think it was a rights thing. thing. But yeah, that would be awesome. That would be just... It awesome. had to have been a rights thing because... Because why that not? Because that was part of the reason whenever they would do flashbacks, the the audio was all weird. I was it, Well, I thought it was also that they didn't physically have access to like the master tapes anymore. I think it was both. I think it was the master tapes, but I think when... In Neo Saban era, I don't think they had all of the rights that they had prior because of the mm-hmm. switchover with Disney. Gotcha. Like whenever there was a handoff, I think a bunch of rights got lost where it's like, you could use the suits, music sus, so right. record your own <laughs> stuff, I guess. Uh, Ox says he doesn't remember the music, but they had capes and cool and fun creatures in a lot of them. Yeah. And then uh, Matt uh, Moniker says, Mystic, well, you know, I say Matt Moniker, but he's been kind of sticking with this one for a while. That the Z R J S Roxy Mystic Force is some of my favorite villains. I didn't mind the music, but I didn't like the theme. So maybe so one person didn't mind the music, one person doesn't remember it. So maybe it's just you. It could be, and that's fine. I will stand on that hill oh. with two flags. One, the Mystic Force in episode music is awful, and two, Operation Overdrive is my least favorite season. Okay. Just find uh, it. You, uh, just go. No, you, Anytime you, you start. Operation Overdrive is my favorite season. Sorry, you misspoke. It was weird. I bet like, we've cleared it up. It's fine. It's Anytime fine. Anytime you. Sorry, what were you saying? Anytime that you click and just stare off. Operation off... Overdrive is my favorite season. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. Please. You're please. terrible. Just kick a man while he's down. <laughs> 
Um, um, yeah. Uh, so let's see. To be honest, there's not that much Ranger news other than what we just covered. Um, Yeah, I mean, there has been, but we kind of touch upon it as it happens, or it's so old it doesn't even matter. I feel like uh, we haven't talked about Morphicon in a while. They've been announcing people left and right. They have. I haven't been keeping up as well as I should, but before we get into that, I realized a little personal, little fun thing. Um, Most of us follow Ranger actors on various social media, and sometimes you get a like or a little whatever, Um, but I had an interaction that I just, I, I liked especially uh, for Hector, Hector David Jr. I think is his name who played Samurai Green, um, who was my second favorite uh, Samurai character after gold. Uh, He was actually my favorite until gold showed up. But anyway, he, uh, he posted some picture of himself on the beach and he made a joke. He was catching a girl and picking her up and he made some joke about dance rehearsals or whatever. It was just like a normal social media post. And, but he also was in a horror movie called uh the i think it was either called the beach or the sand where like the sand kills you and i watched that movie because i like horror movies I'm like ah whatever and it's kind of cheesy but it's kind of fun you know and and actually weirdly oh, who's in that there's a celebrity in that um who's the guy that was uh jamie kennedy jamie kennedy showed up oh. <laughs> and it's just like what like why is he in this but anyway uh but the whole thing was like get off the sand like kind of like get out of the, if you're on the sand it's gonna kill you get off the sand and so she was running and I was one of the first people to comment and he and his whole thing is he's like, pick her off the sand. And I'm like, get off the sand was my comment. And he laughed at it. So I was like, yeah, all right. He knows. Nice. He, knows he knows I know that movie. <laughs> a, deep, a deep cut. A deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. And, and I've had plenty of more meaningful interactions with other people, but just, I don't know, just the, the, the it's very rare. My love of horror movies and my love of Power Rangers connect in that way. Although Cabin in the Woods, but I didn't have an interaction about that. I had I had something similar where uh, very briefly it was literally like a five to ten second interaction. I met uh, Adam Scott who is on Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. and wow. uh, uh, I was at a party in Los Angeles that okay. he and a lot of other people were at, and uh, it he would it you could tell it was a lot of like just on autopilot where I was like oh cool thanks oh cool thing and I went up and and I was like hey been a big fan loved you since boy meets world and i could tell like i like stopped his autopilot right he's like oh boy meets world <laughs> he's like oh thank you <laughs> like such a, like everybody's like oh i love you on parks and rec oh this movie or that i like hey remember when you were griff i like yeah. you on boy meets world he's just like <laughs> what <laughs> so that's awesome i feel he's in a new show now that i've heard good things about called severance yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen it pop up, but I don't know too much about it to be honest. Um, the premise, and I don't think this is a spoiler because this is like what you see in the um, trailer or whatever, is it's a, a tech company. Well, it's a company. Well, I'm assuming it's a tech company, but I don't know. But it's like a, an office yeah. cubicles, and the premise is that he's one of the people that works there. But everybody that works there, when they walk in, they get their memory wiped of their life outside of the business, and they do their stuff, and when they walk out, they get their memory wiped. When they go back to real life. So in real life, they don't know what their job is. And in the job, they don't know what the real life is. And that's the whole premise. And it's not just him, but he's like the main character. So it seems like interesting. And it seems very like classic sci-fi. That is interesting. Speaking of uh, shows, what are some that you're watching right now that you would either suggest people watch or ones that you're like, please don't watch this. Save your time. <laughs> well, one that I just binged all of. And I, I mentioned this to you before. It's an animated show that's already done uh, called Infinity Train. And it was on Cartoon Network, and then I think HBO Max picked it up because that's where I saw it. Um, it was four seasons, ten episodes a season, ten minutes an episode. So each season is like a movie, basically. Uh, and it uh, it's if you like Adventure Time, if you like Gravity Falls, if you it, it's not as extreme as Rick and Morty, but it's got a little Rick and Morty to it as well. Mm-hmm. I, it's right in that vein, and it's it's fantastic. Uh, somebody did a list of like sci-fi shows that are not being watched enough, or whatever. And it was on there. And so I did. And the first season is fantastic. And it was at the end, I'm like, we don't need more. And then the second season, I'm like, oh, okay, this was good. This was good too. And then the third season, I'm like, really? Is this what we're doing? And then at the end, I'm like, oh my God. And then the fourth season was fine. <laughs> it was still good, but the first three were just all good. You know? Mind-bogglingly then, good. Yeah. And then the fourth one was fine, but it's kind of like where, where we talk about ending this season of Power Rangers, where it's like, it's fine, but not a good one to end on. Any of the other three seasons would have been a good one to end on. This one felt because, and they had said, apparently the creator had said they wanted to do eight chapters, as they call them. And so chapter four would have been kind of like a middle chapter, which would have been fine. But as a final chapter, I'm like, oh, and there are a few unanswered questions. 
but not so much it's not worth watching. Because I know sometimes it's like a big cliffhanger and like, why bother watching the show? It's yeah. not that. Um, and yeah, yeah. if you like those shows that I mentioned, if you like sci-fi and stuff, it's it, at the very least watch the first season because it's only, it's a hundred minute, you know, commitment. And I, I think it's great. So from bottom to top, yeah. how would you rank those four shows for people who haven't watched most of them or like have just dabbled? Gravity Falls, right? Infinity Train, Rick and Morty, Adventure Time. Well, I will say right off the oh, bat, Steven if, Universe is the oh, and Steven Universe. Okay, yeah, that's another good one to throw in there. Although that one is the yeah, that's fine. I, right off the bat, Infinity Train is kind of at a disadvantage because it had four seasons that were like an hour and something long each, where these other ones had so much and some were yeah, still yeah, going. Yeah. So, um, but ju- this is just for yeah. you. This is one hundred percent biased. It's tough because all of those shows I like. Um, I'm going to put gravity falls at the bottom. Okay. But that's at the bottom of shows. I really like, yeah, this so is falls, like yeah. bad pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gravity falls. Um, Steven universe. Adventure time. Oh, I'm sorry. Gravity falls. Steven universe. I'm going to put infinity train next, but it's weird to do that. It, it might be because it's fresh in my mind. And it's also kind of like comparing like firefly to star Trek. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, well, I, those were, they're both episodes. in the same genre, but, but it's, yeah. So I'll put infinity train and people are going to be like, what the heck are you talking? There's no way this is better than Steven universe. That's fine. And I like, but all these, you're, you're putting me in a tough spot. So I know. So, so yeah, gravity falls, adventure time, infinity train, and then uh, Rick and Morty and Adventure Time, I'm going to put a tie because okay. I like them both equally, but for completely different reasons. Honestly, if I had to pick, I'd put Adventure Time above it, but it, it, I don't feel like it's a fair competition. And are you current on every show you listed? Well, Adventure Time's over. There's like a new like spinoff series I haven't watched, but I've seen all of that. Uh, Gravity Falls is over. Infinity Train is over. Steven Universe is over. Uh, so the only one I'm not current on is Rick and Morty. If there have been new seasons, uh, new episodes that I missed somehow, okay. but all of those shows are over except for Rick and Morty. So yes, I've seen okay. all of the episodes, not counting spinoff shows that I haven't. No, seen that's yet. fair. Just yeah. for the yeah. sake of yeah. argument. I mostly did that for me. Cause I like, I like Rick and Morty, but I'm not current. And then all the other shows I've heard nothing but good things about, but it's just one of those like part yeah, of it. <laughs> Part of what I've learned, and I brought this up with Ultraman X, is like part of it is out of that list, you're like, Infinity Trade is third, but it's the shortest, which to me is like, might be the first one to be watched. And then the it, rest, you know, it's the easiest one to watch. Like, out of all of those, like I said, I watched all four seasons in the last week or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, and I say it's like watching a movie, but it's not because if I have 10 minutes, I watch an episode. You know what I mean? It's real easy to fit one in here and there. Um, yeah. It begins. Um, yeah. Oh, Ox agrees with Adventure Time. It, it's tough though because I, I don't. Anybody could argue that I was wrong in any of those slots, and I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, you know." Like, and because a lot of it is subjective. They're all very, very good shows. Yeah. For different reasons and different, you know, and 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 part of what I liked about Infinity Train. I mean, there's a lot to like. I didn't know anything about it. Someone said, "Hey, watch this show," and I watched it, and that helps. A lot of the other shows, I kind of had an idea what it was going in, you know. Yeah. So it's fun to just find something and not know what's going to happen. And that was the same season to season. I'm like, what is the next season going to even be? And I'm like, oh, it's this, you know? So that was kind of fun. Nice. Um, let's get back to Power Rangers for a second because we got to train. Uh, uh, my favorite Sentai is Geki Ranger, which is adapted to Jungle Fury, one of the Rangers of all time. Well, uh, for those that don't know, Jungle Fury is my favorite Power Ranger season of all time. Uh, there is my uh, mark to prove it. I always there wanted to do uh, I've only seen like part of one episode of Geki Ranger. I always, my, my, both of us, our Sentai knowledge is way lower than our Power Rangers knowledge. But it's cool. Um, but, uh, but I, I hope that I like Geki Ranger, but if you like Power Jungle Fury and Geki Ranger, then there's a good chance I like it too. Um, so you asked me what shows am I watching? I mentioned one and we spent 20 minutes on that. What shows are you watching that you would like to recommend or not recommend as you said? Um, so kind of, uh, there's a lot I'm watching right now. I'm finishing up on, uh, I guess I'll start by service on Amazon prime. I'm watching a show called the wilds. Mm-hmm. It just finished season two. And, uh, it's about, um, these, it's funny when I explain to you the plot, you're going to be like, that sounds like another show that I like that I've watched. Um, season one is a bunch of these girls are supposed to go to a like wellness retreat and oh. on their way there, the plane crashes and they're trapped on a deserted island. Really? Yes. 
That sounds it, like Yellow Jackets. <laughs> yes, it came out like it was one of those where it's like yeah. I don't think anybody bit off of anybody, but they right. have like very similar starting plots, but then right. it goes very different. Okay. Um, but it it just wrapped season two. I have like two episodes left or something. Mm-hmm. But that one's pretty good. Um, I'm currently <laughs> Is that watching. One what you thought Yellow Jackets was going to be? Um, no. Uh, Yellow Jackets. I tell everybody is way better for those no, who no, haven't but, seen it. But- I full disclosure, I know people that worked on slash created Yellow Jacket. So I'm a fan of the show, but of course I'm going to promote it. But but I remember when I mentioned it to you, I thought you had an idea in your head of what you thought it was going to be. And so I was wondering if this other show is, oh, that's what I thought Yellow Jackets was going to be. No, um, I guess it's been a while since I watched it, but Yellow Jackets definitely by, I want to say like episode five, I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on anymore. Right. And yeah. like, it, and it was like a fun wild ride. This one, it's a lot easier to call shot, but you still can't like predict everything. There have been at least three times where I'm like, I think this is going to happen. And then it does. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Um, so this one is more fun. If you're like, I only have time for one show, one season of a show. I'd say Yellow Jackets every time. Got so it. good. So good. Worth the Showtime, you know, month trial. Just binge it. Or Hulu. You can get it through, I think, too, right? Is it? I think, because we don't have Showtime, but we have Hulu. Now, at some point, you get it through Hulu. I don't know if that's still true. We yeah. had to get it through Showtime, but however okay. you can watch it, watch yeah. it. It's good. Um, watching the boys as it comes out. Same. What a good show. Not for everybody, but if, well, again, this is where my love of superheroes, my love of horror, right yeah. there, you know, like, yeah. I, I Every episode of the boys... Like and I've read some of the boys. I'm I'd say like a quarter of the way through. I've read like the first two issues, so I'm. Not, it's it's so it's, seeing it on paper and seeing it like live action in motion mm-hmm. are two totally different things. I don't know how I'm like. I know there's going to be some weird stuff in here, and then I'm still like, oh, I. It's very rated R, rated X. Like so, for people that don't know. Like, like, don't just jump in. Like, let's see what it is. Like, there's a lot of gore and adult themes. It, it is stuff. one of – it yeah. was is probably the most adult show I could ever say somebody could watch that I can think of off the top of my off head. Off the top of my head, I'll agree with that. Um, At least – well, there's probably dramas and things that, like, were on, like, the, the most adult graphic-based. Yeah, maybe so. Um, yeah. Uh, I Similar to uh, Infinity Train, I don't know how there's going to be a season of The Boys after this. Like, we're not done. Oh, I – but like, I 100% know. Uh, well, because you've read the comics. No, I, I oh. right now is where I'm at in the comics. Okay. Well, so I'm, I don't even know like what happens after this. Well, I guess I, okay. Well, we're, we're being vague, and so people haven't watched it. It's like who, what's going on. But I, I guess I feel like this should could be the last season. But I guess maybe not. But they I already like got it. they already got renewed for season four one okay. episode. Well, I'm good. I like the show. But yeah. Um, let's pause in your shows for a second. Let me see. We got another comment here. Uh. Recently made a video where I put Power Rangers SPD theme in Super Mega Force. Oh, yeah, throw it in chat. Go ahead. Um, that might have been one of the ones I saw. Like, I, I, they come up, you know, because of search algorithms occasionally. Yeah. And, and yeah, they definitely do a good job. Um, so, okay. So, you got other shows you wanted to mention? Uh, those were on Prime. All right. Well, I'll, I'll jump in with the show then. Um, oh, go for it. I, I, I watched Star Trek. I've seen every Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Star Trek's. Um, and uh, watching, um, strange new worlds right now which is the captain pike show which is like takes place like a minute before captain kirk like captain kirk's alive and he's out there this is just like right before captain kirk uh and it's great it's the best star trek show i've seen in a long time um not everyone will agree um but i like it better than picard i like it better than discovery i like it better than jj abrams movies um it's well made it's well acted like all of them are though you know what i mean um but I feel like Star Trek has been drifting for what makes it Star Trek. And a little bit of that I didn't mind, but this reminded me, oh, this is what I like about Star Trek. It's just hopeful and positive and people trying to be the best version of what a human can be. And it's like inspirational and it's it's just comforting, but it's also just a lot of fun and there's action. And it's just, it isn't every episode like, oh, here's something soul crushing that we have to deal with and we lost again and everything's, you know, which is kind of what Picard is and Discovery dips its toe in and out of that. And, you yeah. know, I, and I watch all those shows, you know, um, but, but yeah, uh, Strange New Worlds is definitely my favorite Star Trek since enterprise easily yeah. i need to watch uh on paramount plus uh for any reality show pe- uh fans out there i'm a huge fan of the challenge franchise 
mm-hmm. and now they've expanded to like three different ones all at once, which I'm excited for. Um, I've heard of it. Uh, do you remember the show The Real World? Yes. Do you remember the show Road Rules? Yes. It's people from those shows battling in a competition together for money. Okay. Well, I remember those shows. I did not watch those shows, but I remember those shows. Do you know, fun fact, which uh, comic book creator was on Real World Season 3? Were, were they – I don't, but I'm going to take a guess. Were they um, like a guest star? Like like they went to a convention or were they like a member of the house? They're a member of the house. Were they a, a comic book artist when they were a member of the house? I think so. Okay. So this would have been like – 90 mid to late 90s or 95 maybe okay um is it someone that's still working today i believe so but not for the work they're like known for who is the person that did the comic book creed okay it's not them clearly <laughs> i don't even know which comic you're talking about the comic in the 90s that was called, it was like a very imagey style with a kid called creed it kind of like a sam oh no i don't i think you're was it called Creed? I thought it was called like Creech. Doesn't matter. It's not the person. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Samurai Ox is saying pick Puck. I don't think it was Puck. It was not Puck. Uh, let me th- I'm trying to think of who would be. So he, I, I know him Creed. from his 90s and early 2000s DC work mostly. He does have a lot of creator owned work, but um, late 90s, early 2000s DC. Say it one more time. Tom Grummet? Uh, known, for, known for team books. Te- like teen team books. Is an artist or a writer? Both. I mean, not Rob Liefeld. No, because you would have known him. Le- less mainstream. Yeah. Um, do I definitely know this person? I think you do, and if you don't, I apologize for this song and dance. Uh, yeah, I, for for the sake of the audience, why don't get you give me a huge clue? Uh, have you heard of Barry Ween? The character, not a person. No, not at all. Okay, that was the thing he created. It for those who don't know, I highly recommend it. Barry Ween, Boy Genius, is like R-rated Dexter's Laboratory. Oh, that sounds vaguely familiar. Let me. It'll tell you what it is if you Google Barry Ween because he created him. Right. Well, that's fine. Judd Winnick. Oh, yep. okay. I do know Judd Winnick, but I, I, it's not like I followed him. So oh, I really cool. liked his like outsider stuff. And like, I was a bigger fan I of only, his. I only vaguely know who he, like, I know his name. I know he's in the industry. I, and I know he was associated with DC, but like, I don't really know who he, you know what I mean? That's fair. Uh, let me share this. Cause I realized I could share this boy genius situation oh, it's so it's so funny so this that's him right there yeah yeah, yeah it's it's just r-rated dexter's lab okay yeah that doesn't uh i don't remember even seeing these comics it's still available for relatively cheap it looks like yeah there's a an not an omnibus but a full collection called the it was right there the big book of barry yeah. ween that i don't is, know what it goes for but i 657 647 oh there you go i was gonna yeah. say i got it from like a second hand store so yeah so if you're interested there you go uh, but uh um, oh foster uh, summy said what do we think of power rangers time force i will let you go first i think it is a good season above average i think it's overrated I think it's a very good season. I think if you go episode by episode, it's got a lot of really strong like arcs for like all of Power Rangers as a whole, where yeah. like some of the best moments come from that I season. Agree. I like the villain a lot. I like yeah, I like the Ranger villain's great. The Six Rangers arc is great. The I pink like the Red Ranger stuff, yeah, arguably the best Pink Ranger of all time, in my yeah. opinion. I'm I'm with you on all of that. It's, uh, it, yeah, yeah, pink female lead. Um, I even like their little the uh was it Chip the robot? Owl? Oh, uh, Trip I think was the, the Trip was the the green haired guy. Green, but, but what was I the don't name of his the, name? Uh, well, yeah, I guess that's the thing is um there's a lot of really good pieces, um but 
A, I just think it's a good season, and there are other seasons just as good, but for some reason this one gets held up higher. I don't know why. Maybe it was just you had to watch it at that time, which I didn't. I watched it later. But the other thing is I'm a huge fan of time travel. And this, this yeah, I was going to say this is why you don't like no it as much. time travel. Yes, technically there is time travel. Like uh, like Jen came back and the rest of the team came back, and there's like one episode where they I, I think go back in time once. But all of the time travel in the the opening, and I do like the theme song a lot, has them like in the old west and here and there. And most of that is from a time that they were like on movie sets or oh no, it was a dream. It was a dream. And it's like it's called time force. How are you not having more time travel? And you're making it seem like there's time travel. What anyway, you knew. There I mean, was no time, 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 or time it's, travel. It's a time good forward. above average season with a lot of good stuff going for it. The time travel, pfft, not having it is not good, and I and I do not understand why it's held as highly as it is, as opposed to just like, hey, it's one of the best seasons. It's it's like, I feel like it's up there. People put it up there a little bit higher than than I do, and I don't know why. I think, like I said, oh, circuit. Thank you, uh, circuit, Matt. Um, I I think people have it higher. And feel free to put your, you know, reasons in the mm -hmm. in the comments when we post the video, just so they don't obviously disappear. Mm -hmm. um, but I I think people remember the highs, like myself, right. and and that's why. Like Eric is one of the coolest six rangers we've ever had. Cool, you know, relationship with the red of the team. Uh, even uh, well, silver West. on things. Yeah, there's a lot of good pieces. There's, there's yeah. a lot. It's yeah, and it's definitely an above average season. It's a good season. I'm not saying it's not. And some of the best team ups we've had involve time force. So I think it's one of those yeah, where it's yeah. like, oh, the the time force crossover with wild force. It's like technically it didn't happen in time force, but like it was also really good. So you can kind right. of like retroactively put it in. Yeah, and um, the, the last the light speed one was actually pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's the other thing. I like light speed rescue better which i know is a controversial opinion so it's one of those things where I'm like oh time force is going to be even better and it's like oh well, yeah <laughs> but yeah. but i but but i like time force and i don't want people to come at me like how could you not like it like i did um but but i yeah i don't know I, it it's fine it's good uh oh, Semrock says he likes the challenge too yes <laughs> i think i started bleeding cbs shows and as well like big brother survivor oh so it's basically just like a reality stars all-star now now they're doing that yeah so they have one coming out in like two weeks called cbs's the challenge or like all-star challenge or something and it's all people not from the mtv shows but are still uh, like the parent production company who makes like survivor and big brother and all that they're like all right we want you guys to be popular too and people to watch these shows. So now all of you are coming into the right. challenge. <laughs> so it's all like fresh faces for those who don't watch those shows. But um, um, hold on real quick. Uh, Tony wants to know, do you guys think it's time for another time travel based season? I will answer that by saying I would like to see any time travel based season because as I just said, I don't consider time force a time travel based season. So yes, I would like to see that. If they made one, I would watch it. If they don't make one, I have Power Rangers Shattered Past on YouTube, which I'm already enjoying. <laughs> or or uh, Hyperforce did a good job of time travel too, which is and, the RPG. And that's that, technically and that, official. It is technically official. So that, that to me is more time force than time force in that way. And that is something that a lot of people have said, not just me, that make that a cartoon. Yeah. Make that a cartoon and you can have all the voice actors come in. Doesn't matter how old they are, what they look like. It's, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see a second here. Uh, I think we missed a few things. Foster Summy asked, do we like Lox yeah. Galaxy? Yes, yeah. I do. Well, and Big Dog, uh, you don't go by this much anymore, but Big Dog Defender was your moniker for quite a while. Yeah, I uh, I coerced uh, Gaz. Prior to Action Activate, Gaz would do a Friday night live stream where he would take suggestions on what he should draw, and then he'd do like a randomization and and draw it. So one time I'm like, what if you drew like Magnet Defender, but like if he had like a dog theme? And he yeah. did, and I was like, "Cool, thanks." Now, when we start our Power Ranger show, I already have something. So, cool beans, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like Lost Galaxy as well. Um, it's again a good above average season. It is. It is not a personal favorite of mine, but it is Correct. good. It is good. Same. I think uh, again, great crossovers. I think the Pink Ranger arc is the best Pink Ranger arc amazing. we've had in any season. And, but it's funny because well, it's not funny because the, the well, the actress is fine. But the yes. actors, the original actors had gotten very sick, and so they had to write around it. So it's interesting, I'll say, instead of funny, that like one of the coolest things that happened 
they were forced to do because of outside forces. You know what I mean? They, they made this big yeah. dramatic thing happen and a change that they never would have done on purpose. Yeah. And luckily, like I said, the actress is fine now. So, you know, it's okay. Um, I missed, there's another, oh, favorite uh, Power Rangers villain. That's a tough one. I feel like I, when we get asked these questions, I always feel like I'm thinking about it for the first time, even though I've probably yeah. given an answer before and I might even give a different answer. Now. So what I will say is um, I'm going to say the scariest villain for me, because mm -hmm. as a kid, I legit had nightmares about this villain, uh, Darkonda from In Space. Mm -hmm. Legit freaked me out. Okay. And I still to this day remember a nightmare I had where Darkonda was chasing me. And I tried to have Justin help me, and Justin was distracted by chasing a bunny. Why did you pick Justin? I didn't. The dream was like, uh -oh. where are the rangers? And I'm like, Justin, a fellow child. Hey, <laughs> help me. And he chased a bunny. And probably another reason I don't like Justin. Another reason? Okay. <laughs> the first being that you weren't him? Th that's the second reason. <laughs> What's the first? Um, I don't know. He's just a little turd. Wow. Strong words, strong words from the big dog. Yeah. Like Foster, watch out. <laughs> um, I I don't know what I've said before. I, it, there's also different, like what makes the best villain, like, but um, Ecliptor always comes to mind. Yeah, um, he's awesome. I, I like him a lot. I like villains that are that that have depth to them, that, that you could kind of see their point of view. They have a code of honor, or that get redeemed, or you know, like like Rancic is another one I like because I understand why he's mad, you know, like Zanaku. Zanaku, yeah, Zanaku's awesome too yeah so i i definitely like the villains that are not just evil for the sake of evil although i can enjoy that if it's played broadly and correctly like like uh campbell well campbell cooley does um a lot of villains but um slither who isn't the big bad of this season i really like slither because he's so over the top and fun and like so i like that too um so yeah i mean i'm i guess i'm gonna go with the clipter just it's kind of like when somebody asked me my favorite movie and I'm like, oh, Empire Strikes Back. Like, is it really? I don't know. But it's the one that comes to mind and it's very good. And so I'll say a clip. Yeah. I'm going to go with with Dark Honda just because, like I said, he yeah. is the first one that comes to mind of like, what villain scares the bejesus out of you? <laughs> Dark Honda. Wolf, woof. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're missing a little bit on the top. Yeah. So let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, um. Tony Robinson likes Lightspeed Rescue. He doesn't understand why fans hate it. Yeah, I, mean, I did fans hate it though. Like I can understand. I, I think it. some just poo poo on it just because it's like, oh no, these seasons are better. It's like, well, so. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I part of what I like about it is just the format of that they're this like uh, official, like sanctioned government team. It, it kind of it makes me think of like the old 80s show mask or like, it, it's just like, like we're superheroes that work with the government and we're like not hiding. And it makes sense. It's like, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. And they had the aquatic base, which was so unique, which I thought was yeah. cool. And, and the whole six Ranger thing in that one. And the only American six Ranger, like, I don't know, there's just a lot of cool stuff in that. And yeah. uh, I'm not, I, I say this, although I'm liking more and more red Rangers. I'm not a red Ranger guy. Like I automatically like the red Ranger, but I did like Carter. Carter's awesome. Was, he was very, you know, just like, I, oh, I'd be, I'd be on his squad. I'd follow him. You know, like it's funny. Cause when you watch forever red and I, I don't know if it was the same for you, but like, as each red Ranger was introduced, it was one of those where like, Hey, I'm Carter. I'm going to recruit you. It's like, that makes sense. Hey, yeah. uh, I'm Leo. I'm, not a lead red ranger i'm gonna come join the fight okay yeah. <laughs> hey i'm you know the equation ranger or from aquatar that That's also amazing. shown up yep <laughs> like all this stuff it was like the ones who were in charge of the plan were yeah. there and then like it was kind of this yeah, trickle down effect too. of like you guys got recruited and i'm the dude it's like yeah all right cool beans um, um seth Oh, go ahead. oh, sorry. I'll Seth, see, uh, I didn't understand Matt's comment, but we'll get to Matt that. Matt was talking about uh, the episode from Time Force with the oh, time travel, quote unquote. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, Seth Films likes our Ranger coverage. The indie Ranger um, coverage. Oh, yes. Indie Ranger coverage. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The, well, theoretically, we're going to do that next week if, if it's released. Available. What? What? It, it's not out yet, as far as I know, still. Because yeah, it was released, I guess, at the convention. So I it was it, premiered at the convention. Right. So I thought they'll show it at the convention, and then the next day it'll go up online or whatever. But as did I. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll we'll do more of those for sure. Um, Gabu Tyra um, has the next uh, question. I think. It would have been, been cool. Time time time. 
would have been cool if, if Time Force had a documentary episode at the end of the finale where they go back in time to 1993 and show the first team of Rangers that all the way to light speed. That would have been the kind of thing that would be fun to do with a time travel theme episode. You're reminding me all the reasons why that, that, that is different. <laughs> You're just fueling his fire. And Got also, it was a thing where I was going through seasons, like because I'd seen a few here and there, but at some point I'm like, I'm going to go through all the seasons in order and watch. Yeah. And I've been listening to the Pelican Mega Mix and the Time Force, Time Burn, Time Burn, Power Rangers, Time Force, Time Force. It's like rocking. And I love the suits. And I'm like, it's a time travel based season with suits I love and an awesome theme song. And everyone says it's the best. I'm so ready. And so that is part of why I'm like, you know, if there's no time travel. I'm disappointed. <laughs> you know? All right. Foster Summy, favorite red. I know yours. Yeah. I mean, Casey from Jungle Fury, obviously. He's the best. I red. know you're second. My set. I don't know my oh, well. There TJ, yeah, yeah, probably. I well, it's tough because it's like, is he my favorite red or is he my favorite blue or do I just really like Selwyn more? It's hard. It's hard to say. Oh, it's the trifecta. It's the triple <laughs> threat. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, who is my favorite red? I feel like we did this before, and I mm. feel like my answer changes every time. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was Andros, and then the more I became an adult, the more I went. Andros is a terrible leader. Yeah. Um. That's why I said uh, blue. Oh, I know what I said. Um, I believe that my favorite red is Boom Comics Jason. Okay, fine. What's your favorite on screen red? Yeah, I know. I know. I needed a, you know a pause. It, it was that politician of thank you very much for asking your question. Thank <laughs> you for being here tonight as I figure out what my answer is. Um, Gosh, Casey's good. I don't want to just copy you, and he's not my favorite, even though I think he's in the top tier. Mm -hmm. um, I really Carter? like Tyler, but he's not my favorite. Tyler's very good, too, yeah. Um, he's not my favorite, but I'm I'm really liking uh, Zato. Zato, which is Zato. weird because yeah, he's a standout in, a, in an average season. Is how yeah, I and that's part of it. Um, gosh, this is tough. While you're thinking, uh, Seth agrees. With, oh no, actually, he doesn't agree with it. He had nightmares with Mesagog when he was a kid. That's Mesagog fair. is another good villain. Um, he's a good mix of like scary, good costume, but you could also kind of understand the motivations. And he's like got this battling within himself. So yeah, that's another another one. I like. This is oh. really difficult. I used to like Cole as a kid. He's kind of. Uh, it was more like he just believed the most. I don't right. necessarily think he was the best leader. He was I, just like, I, just don't give up ever. That was another case where I thought um, uh, Yellow, I can't remember her name now, but I thought Yellow was like kind of the lead. Like she was, she leader was the leader. There. And then like, yeah, he's there, but like she had the military training. She was keeping people together. And she it was led sort of, the team before they yeah, found him. Yeah, she she was kind of the leader in my mind. Um, so I, I, I didn't hate Cole, but I was never like, wow, what a good Raid Ranger. I was like, oh, I guess he's going to be the, the front man while she keeps things together. <laughs> You know what? Just for the sake of time, and I hate that I'm saying this, I'm going to go with Tommy. Tommy? Zio. I don't know, Zio. man. It's hard. I don't know. That Tommy Zio is your favorite Red Ranger. I, uh, I need Locked more time. Down. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's a weird choice, but okay. I, I, I mean, said it's Jason in, in the comics, but... but I, I mean, it's fine, but it's also like... Even for a Tommy fanboy, like that's uh, like most people aren't going to pick that version. Well, I I feel like he's a better leader in Zio than he is in Turbo. Yeah, well, he was on his way out in Turbo, but I I mean, for me, a Green is always going to win because he's like the most interesting. But it's a favorite Red Ranger. I don't know. Right. Uh, no, but but you could pick a different whatever. That's fine. I don't think that's I don't know, man. I, don't think, was, an, I think I don't think that's the true answer for you. But we'll, it's we'll not. I need more time. Yeah, um, Tony uh, Robinson. Uh, could you guys see Lord Zed trying to create new lines of evil? Oh, I yes, so. he should. Yes, I can, and he should be doing it at in this season of the current show where we have half of a season left, and he hasn't come back yet. Yes, I love how everybody is unintentionally gassing you up. <laughs> well, that's a big deal to me. Like, if we don't see Zed come back again, that's ridiculous. We've talked about it. <sighs> Surprised you didn't go with Smash for villain for, with them power. He's not a a villain. Wait, what? Are you making a joke? <laughs> Cause I smash from beast morphers. Am I missing? I think Ox is making a joke, but I think I'm just not getting it fully. I think so too. But yeah. also thank you for clarifying. I was like, I know smash is a character that I like. Smash was I don't... The, the, the blue yeah. The B spot. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Okay. 
Gabu said, uh, I heard the reason why Lightspeed was able to make their own man-made Zord was because they studied old destroyed Megazord. That's awesome. Like, I love that kind of legacy stuff. That's kind of cool. Scott as my favorite from, from RPM. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a solid choice. I considered him as well. He's he's solid. I would like like Big Doug said before, I he's top tier. He's not my personal favorite, but he is top tier. And part of the problem with that is because RPM is one of the seasons that's so good that all the characters are so good. And like just picking a favorite is very difficult for me. Um, I, I think we both agree that Dylan is our favorite from that season. Honestly, depending on the day, it's Dylan or Ziggy. I go back and forth. Oh, like uh, okay. Him. I'll go with Dylan, you go with Ziggy. Okay. And honestly, it's sort of like if Bulk and Skull were good Power Rangers, that's almost who they would be. <laughs> you know I mean? If like, Bulk but, was just a chiseled android? Well, no, no, no. But I'm not talking about their physicality. But that it, it, I know. Their they're dynamic. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, it, so, but yeah, Scott's great. And It's, what's mirror, funny, it's mirror Universe Bulk and Skull? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's funny about uh, Scott in, in RPM is I, because eventually I watched things in order, but before I did, I watched Samurai, and I saw Clash of the Red Rangers that had RPM Red Scott in it. And it had the actor, um, his name is escaping me right now, but he did the voice, I guess, because of union stuff or because he wasn't in New Zealand, whatever. Well, he, he was uncredited. Him. Okay. So, yeah. So, I guess it was, and he was already on probably uh, the, uh, Jessica Jones or whatever show he was doing at that point. Um, Eka Darville, that's his name. And, uh, and, and yeah, he's a great actor. Um, but he, I give him credit for coming back and doing the voice and so like trying to be that, but then he had to be in the suit the whole time. So my image of that character was this guy in the suit and I had no idea what he looked like or was like in this, you know, and then I saw the show and I was like, Oh, Oh, that's him. And so it was this weird reverse thing where I met him as a civilian after seeing him as like the seasoned power ranger that knows everything. And, you know, yeah. Um, that's the guy stress rooms. It's disturbing. Yeah. Uh, Taylor, Taylor should have made the leader in wild force. Uh, good night, Foster. Thanks for hanging good out. Good night. Thank you. Love your icon. Okay. Uh, just joking around because I was smashed Stan from the beginning. I think you guys were on board. From, um, I, didn't I wasn't on board from the get go, but I, I understand where you're coming from. Not being on board for the get go. That's cuckoo bananas. <laughs> you got me. Yeah. Um, and Tony said, I would love another season based name. I would too, but I kind of feel like that that's what we got. Like as close as we're gonna get, it was Beast More for you know season two tie-in stuff, which I don't want to say too much about for those that haven't seen it. Um, there it is interesting. Well, see, they're drifting apart from Sentai now, so it might not matter. But there have been a couple follow-up like movies and and things with the Sentai actors for past seasons, and I think RPM might be one of them. So theoretically, they could adapt that footage, but it seems like they're doing that less and less. So who knows? And also, I've heard that the movies are like extra cost. Like whenever they want to use the movies, it's it's yeah, it's not true. in the original contract or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got Marty Chonks. Late to the stream. Welcome. How do you guys think the Santa X series would be like? I reckon it might be a reboot of each PR season. I wow, I didn't think that because that's I I don't think I mean, so that'd be either. awesome, but that seems too ambitious. There's too many. So the thing that I'm like having a hard time thinking is are they just going to establish this as another like universe in the power rangers multiverse mm -hmm. that we have established or are they going to do a hundred percent new thing in the same universe or is it going to be a thing like i had mentioned with the ultraman anime of like hey we're acknowledging the previous mmpr I, this is I, a new I thing think, i think it's going to be a new thing but unlike the the movie we had in the theaters a couple of years back from legendary i think it's gonna acknowledge kind of the existence of stuff and kind of try to stay true to it but not want to be bogged down with that history and canon and just do their own thing but maybe it goes a season or how i don't know if they're gonna do seasons or movies or whatever they do they get a few years in and like with marvel marvel's like well here's iron man well okay here's captain america and eventually like okay we feel comfortable enough to do avengers Fast forward 10, 12 years, and they're like, let's bring back Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. Like, it's just mayhem, stuff that never could have happened. But now people are so invested and so familiar that we could do multiverse of madness, and it's no big deal. I could see Power Rangers going that way, where they're kind of trying to start their own thing, maybe have some actors show up, you know, have like, you know, Jason David Frank, but he's a security guard or something, you know, that kind of stuff. And then once it gets established enough, maybe you cross it over with like the cartoon or the other show and mix it there. And once it gets, okay, well now maybe we'll bring in some mighty Morphin stuff from the, you know, and like I could see it taking a while to get there, but I'll cross it over. The thing that my hope is, is similar to what you're referring to where like, I think it was like three to five years into the Marvel cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. I think it was four years in, they had the Avengers film, right? If they aren't doing this now where they're like, okay, we're starting 
in 2023 yep. and by 2026 or seven, we're doing our own version of shattered grid. Right, right. I will be just yeah. dumbfounded. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and if they, the more they do, the more they could build. Cause again, when Avengers came out, it was like, I can't believe they did Avengers. And from there, it was just like, now we're just could do anything. You know, and th- that could be Power Rangers. And they could bring in Sentai actors. This is, that's what I'm saying. I could see like 10 years on if they do it right. Oh, look, here's Sentai actors that are alternate reality versions of these characters. Like all kinds of crazy stuff. Or even uh, if they want it, like to me, what I think would be cool, and this is very James Gunn-esque, is for those who have watched the show Peacemaker on uh, show. Another HBO Max. Show, but- yeah, very adult. But the thing about it is like nothing in that show anybody could care about when you tell them about it before the show like yeah. hey this is about a hero you've never heard of there's going to be cameos from other heroes you've never heard of or villains and yeah. they're going to be fighting a villain that you might have heard of that isn't in any mainstream media but you have to be a deep cut and comic fan to get. Guy isn't even really a hero so much as a vigilante that is a jerk that everyone hates but it's it. all these characters yeah. that it's like i don't know who those are and even like there were some that you and i am sure of like i think i remember them being mentioned but i don't know anything about vigilante, vigilante is the one i knew the most actually yeah. not that i knew a lot but i just knew who he was i knew his costume like i knew yeah him. But it was stuff like that. And that show was great. And with this, I feel like they could, if they leaned into it hard enough, it was like, hey, who's this guy? Oh, this is Dax. And you're just like, just full blown, just like, here you go. Oh, who are these three people? They're the Beetleborgs. Who are, never mind. Let's team up and do this. Like, just go all in on this stuff. What what do you think would be the best season to do that with? Oh, Operation Overdrive is my favorite season. That makes sense. And, and, it, and it fits not only because it's your favorite season, but it is like an overlooked, not well thought of season. They could take those characters and do something new with them. If they want to bring them in and make them not bad, I'm all for it. What do you mean? Like, like not bad. Like the way Michael Jackson would say, like, they're so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get what you mean. Operation Overdrive is my favorite season. Good point. Um, <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Let's see. What do we got next? Uh, Samurai o- Ox Laugh. Uh, Gabutaira, when I was a kid, I used to have nightmares of Scorpio. Yeah, he's actually pretty gnarly. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Um, Seth, what post-production wise do you think is missing from Indie Toku? Huh. That is a good question. Missing. Um, most Indie Toku doesn't have Megazord stuff or vehicle stuff. Because it's very hard to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying like they better do it or it's no good, but that is to me what is missing, if you want to put it that way. Um, I think a lot of them have really good music and sound effects. The CGI is usually as good as Power Rangers or in the ballpark. The costumes are usually good. Depending on the production, the acting could be better or worse. Um, depending on the production, the writing could yeah, I, the only thing that's like like yeah, missing is is Megazord stuff. Um yet to me. I would rather have super duper polished like blast effects, morph mm-hmm. sequences, or teleporting yeah. than a Megazord sequence that is good for what it is, but right. takes so much more effort for like ten seconds than yeah. like these little things that to just be, like crazy polish an episode. I agree, and to be clear, I'm not saying it needs it. It's just that is the obvious thing that's missing. And I'll even go a step further. A lot of older Toku. Like the first couple seasons of Sentai didn't have Megazords. You know what I mean? They might have a tank or they might have a cool motorcycle. The Common Rider has a motorcycle. So maybe it'd be cool if like, yeah, they had like a super motorcycle or like a fun car or something that would be a little bit more doable. Um, similar to, yeah, like Ultraman too. Like they had the Science Patrol. They'd all have like just basically a car that they put cardboard on. I mean, it looked cool. Like that kind of stuff would be kind of fun. Um, the only other thing I guess Indie Toku generally is missing. And again, this is, I understand why, and I'm not criticizing, but a, a, uh, steady timetable, you know, like things coming out like more quickly uh, and more consistently being longer episodes, that kind of stuff. But I understand why it's not. So that is missing just like the Megazords are missing, but it's, I understand there's not like a solution to that other than, you know, getting money and budget and letting people do that out of their full-time job. So I get that. Yeah, so I, th- I think we've lucked out at least power ranger wise, where a lot of that indie Toku has gone out in a pretty consistent basis. Yeah. And even if it's like, a long time in between episodes they're like hey here's update. an update yeah, like we're help. clearly working yeah. on it we are yeah. only so so many yeah. people updates help you know i'll say this though and this is not uh well I've, I've commented on a few of the videos we did but i'll just say this is a sweeping thing for any 
video of anything. Sound is super important. Yes, and it I is. think sometimes people don't realize it because if you can't hear the dialogue, then it, it's terrible. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if there's a bad effect, it's like, okay, well, whatever. I watch a lot of shows with bad effect. Or if, you know, the, the, the weapon looks a little cardboardy, okay, whatever. But you got to understand what people are saying. So, like, if, if, if you're making something and you're like, well, I got, you know, two more hours to put in. What should I put it on? Make sure the sound is good. Make sure people could hear it. The, whatever you're going to do, the mix, whatever. Re-record a line. Because there's so many videos, and again, not just Toku, but just YouTube, movies, whatever. I'll watch bad writing. I'll watch bad acting. I'll watch bad effects. If I can't hear what's going on, I just turn it off. Yeah, that's fair. I'd say, in agreement with you, audio, then special effects that are already, like, you know, just part of this narrative. Mm -hmm. And then if you can still put in those extra stuff, like the Megazords or whatever, do that. But, like, you don't always need it to no, tell a good story. Agreed. Uh, Ox is saying, excuse me, wasn't the last movie only made to hold on to the rights because they had the dark and gritty short to serve? I had not heard that. I also did not hear that because the the unofficial one with James Vanderbeek came mm -hmm. out in like 2012, 2013, and the movie came out 2017, and the movie before that came out in like 97. Oh, I, I, I think it more is because Saban still had the rights at that point. And I took it as Saban saying... Either maybe I'm going to sell, let me make some money, or like this is my big shot, the nostalgia is high, let's do it. And I took it as like, oh, that was Saban trying to make some money and it didn't work out and now Hasbro has it. That's the, literally how I took it. Um, I hadn't heard anything about the rights thing though. Yeah, I have a feeling. If the you movie... have something to back that up, like put a link or tell it. Yeah. Like, like, if you're right, I mean, yeah. Yeah, with the movie not doing well, I think that was Saban not really having as much leverage with Hasbro. Yeah. Of like the toys for the movie didn't sell and the movie didn't do great. So yeah. buy all of the IP now. Well, that, uh, and I think that was that they hit that middle ground, which is terrible where the OG fans were like, this isn't what we wanted. And nobody knew was, and then the people that only knew Mighty Morphin from the show were like, this isn't what we remember. And then nobody knew we got into it. Like it didn't really please anybody that much. You yeah. Know? Um, Tony's saying that, uh, just like you said, big dog, they should do a season that is in the cinema that is cinematic. That takes place in the current universe. I mean, that'd be great. You know, I, yep. all of it, do all of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, the only thing I can think of is I feel like we just don't want a CW power Rangers, but we'll take pretty much anything else. Here's the thing. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. And here's why I don't want a CW power Rangers, but supernatural was CW. Yeah. Smallville was CW and Smallville started off as like CW Superman, but then it got crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and so there's a lot of CW stuff that, you know, if you got to start that way and have that season to get people into it and then it goes off crazy, I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll stick with it a little bit. So here's what I'll say outside yeah. of Supernatural, what CW shows do you watch? Currently, not many, but I, I watched Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and um, some others that I'm forgetting, but I didn't what? stop watching them because like I was, they sucked. Or, oh, Arrow. I watched Arrow. I watched for way too long, to be fair. But. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I don't watch any of those anymore because I don't enjoy them anymore. But I, I will yeah. say, side tangent, yeah. I did commit on Facebook, which no one cares about, even the person I posted on, uh, that I am going to watch uh, this season of The Flash. Not all of it, but starting going forward because someone who I uh, acted with in high school is now a recurring character. That's cool. Well, uh, and to be clear, I stopped watching this. And I'm not I, – I plan on going back to at least Flash and Legends of Tomorrow – I watched Supergirl for a while too, and I don't think I ever watched Batgirl or Black Lightning because I'd already stopped that time. There was like a lot of we moved and we changed streaming services, and it just I kind of fell behind. And then it was a thing of like, oh, and now to catch up, I have to watch like five shows. And really, I don't care about like I just want to watch The Flash and I just want to watch Legends of Tomorrow, and and eventually I'll get back to them. But um, yeah, I don't know. Well, CW could do good stuff is all I'm saying. Um, we're getting close to having to be done here, but let's see if we can catch up on the rest of these. Uh, uh, Matt Chunks. Let's see what he says. Matt Chunk, Marty Chunk. Sorry, uh, it could be in a scenario where it's in continuity with the main show, but it's a different tone, kind of like Torture of Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Yeah, I've heard of. I, I'm a big Doctor Who fan. Um, uh, big Dog, not as much. Uh, but I've hey, seen... I'm I'm still on season like five. Mm hmm. Uh, I've I haven't finished all the Jodie Whittaker stuff, but I've seen everything from Chris Eccleston up, and I've seen all the Torchwood and a good chunk of classic Who. Certainly not all of it 
uh, like I don't think any. Well, maybe somebody's seen all of it, but yeah. But no, yeah, I agree with the the tone shift thing. That would that's kind of what I'm hoping for, to be honest. Yeah, same. Um, let me see. Uh, and Tony said they could soft reboot Beetleborgs or give those characters powers to new generation. I agree because uh, I think Hasbro got the rights to those when they got it from Saban. Uh, and then Seth Films it makes it makes feel good when you say sound because I'm the sound designer from Unworthy Set. Good, awesome. That, well, then, yeah, I didn't know that, and so you know, I wasn't just saying that to kiss up to you. Yeah, it sounds same. so important. Um, and that Unworthy okay. is a prime example where my favorite stuff in it has nothing to do with Megazords. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, when I said that, it was just because like what's missing. Like that's the thing that jumps in my head. But uh, no, Unworthy is great. Um, do you guys prefer getting the Sentai toys, the American toys? I prefer Sentai. Yeah, Sentai almost always. Yeah, I would say there's only like a handful of instances where I like I may actually prefer the Super Mega Force keys over the uh, Bandai keys. Oh, I don't. Well, here's the thing: the Bandai keys. There's a bunch of different levels That's of like true. what okay. kind of key you get. In terms of collecting, I was able to get every single American key except for the ex one exclusive set, which I got bootlegs of. Uh, and they have the little flip, which is nice, but they're not accurate to the show. They don't look as nice on my display rack. But the Japanese ones, you're right. There's like some that have stickers, some that don't, some that you could easily get in a set, some that you got to pay 30 bucks because it was an exclusive. So that's very annoying. So in terms of collecting, the Americans were more fun to collect. But yeah. in terms of what I display, right now I have none displayed except for I think I have a couple for the new Mobarate that I got. Uh, I probably said that wrong, but uh, I am probably getting rid of my American keys and keeping my Japanese keys. Wow. Um, because I don't really, I haven't displayed my American keys in years. They're just sitting in a box, but my Japanese ones have been displayed and will be going up again soon. So even though it's hard to complete the sets, I, they just look so nice and they're exactly the right size. And the newer ones even have the flip function, which is crazy. You know, what sucks. I what? still need like three keys or something from the American set. Yeah. What keys do you even need? They were from the Toys R Us uh, final runs where it was like two was it translucent ones and one new one. The hardest ones to get other than the ones that were at Power Morphicon, which was Titanium and Wolf, which I just got straight up bootlegs of, was it, like they re-released the Morpher with like like 30 keys and there was like three exclusives. And I got that on sale and I, I – here's a story. I got that on sale, took the keys I needed, and then um, I, as you know, you do a lot of toy group stuff and I don't. And I've had a lot of bad experiences, which is why I don't like to do it. And one of them was, I forget the whole deal, but, part, but basically I was going to trade the Morpher and all the keys, except for the three exclusive ones, and a bunch of other random keys I had. Some of them were bootlegs, some were not. But it was like a big, huge pile of keys and a Morpher in perfect condition. And I was going to get the uh, either the Wild Force Zord or, or maybe it was the Predazord. And like, you know, it was like, it was like money-wise it worked out, but it was like new stuff and vintage stuff and we were going to trade. And we packed it all up and they said they sent it and I said I sent it and they never sent it to me. So I lost all of that because I was like, well, it's money I wasted on stuff I have. But, oh, I traded it for a Zord I don't have. And it was a weird thing where it was like the guy wasn't answering and wasn't answering. And then somebody was like, oh, this isn't the guy. I found his phone. I'm at a funeral for his girlfriend. It's like, oh, what? I remember this. What a lie. That is the worst lie I've ever heard. Like, like believe me, I'm not being insensitive because it kept going. And then it was like weeks later it's like well, this is the mother of the friend of the person I and mean, we haven't seen him and it's like this is none of this is true this is a, it was like the worst most over the top like it was probably some 10 year old kid because it's just like you can't can't be, saying nothing would have made more sense you know what I mean? it was just anyway so i lost all that in that that thing <laughs> so no i do have those three keys it was uh no from those ones where it'd be like here's a translucent version and here's a shiny version and then here's one new one you need right so, well, I, I if and when I get rid of mine, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, old news. See what I can sounds find. Sounds oh, good. Yeah, for the movie, uh, Arrowverse or their world have great running. Uh, Arrow specifically, not the Arrowverse, and I'm way behind. But Arrow, I just got really tired of people making the exact same mistakes over and over and over again. Nobody yeah. grew. It's like, oh, we got to stop lying to each other. You're right, and they have a big story about it, and then. The, Three weeks later, it's like, we got to stop lying to each other. You're right. They have a big story about it. I just kept, it's like, stop lying to each other. We, we learned this lesson. Come on. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's when we're Power Rangers usually uh, wins because they'll have that lesson and then they've learned it usually. Not Ion, but, you know. Uh, I'm working on Power Rangers Uncensored Edition. Did you guys know SPD, the monster, shoots laser beams? I grew it. 
Wait, what? Oh no, did not know that. Oh, so you're taking Sentai footage and incorporating it with the American footage. That's that's a heck of an undertaking. That's an interesting project, though. Yeah, we'll have to check um, that out. Who is the actor or actress? Big Dog Defender. Oh, uh, she plays. Um, she's a new speedster, and her Jesse name's Quick? not Jesse Quick. It's uh, it's like I mean, a new one. Yet. I think Fast Track is her name. Never heard. Um, of her. she was introduced in the DC Rebirth run that started mm-hmm. in like 2016 2017 in the comic she might have been the comic. she doesn't in the show okay i know there's a white-haired speedster that i like i've seen her around in the books but i don't actually but yeah it, it was cool i i saw um i saw it floating around on my normal superhero stuff i was like is that and then i looked and i'm facebook friends with her and she's like i can talk about this publicly hey. now <laughs> Uh, Tony likes Superman and Lois, which I haven't seen, to be fair. I've I heard those thing. are good. Uh, and Stargirl. I forgot Stargirl was that. Yeah. So, like, I stopped watching before a lot of these shows came out. So, But, again, uh, these aren't really Arrowverse shows. Yes, they talked about them in Crisis, but, like, they kind of do their own things. Mm. Uh, uh, could cool. you imagine a season-long bad guy where we don't see Zords through three or four of this season, building the team and getting to believe in the cause? Yeah, that would be awesome. Just I think it would be up. awesome. I don't think they're going to do it. I think yeah. that's, like, a comic arc. I don't think they Agreed. would... Because sell they need toys to sell well. toys and, and yeah. that they don't, you know, release ever. Well, they've been getting better, to be fair, but yeah, not uh, Marty Chunks. Even from the cinematic series, I'm not sure how the franchise can get a bigger audience and attract individuals who aren't fans. More might be more fan for nostalgic. Um, I think because it's Netflix, because if yeah. they push it, you know, I mean, Stranger Things wasn't a thing, yeah, and they just made it a thing. And so, if they're not trying, if they, and this is why I think they wouldn't make it connected to anything that's come before. Because they don't want people to have to know anything. It's like, hey, it's a new Power Rangers for a new generation. It's on Netflix. Oh, have you seen it? And like, whatever the thing is, has to be standalone at least in the beginning. Yeah, and I think that's the way to attract new people. Yeah, I I think I agree I with you there. Where it just needs to be its its own thing, and it has the Power Rangers branding. But yeah, hopefully, it's yeah. like dive in, watch it, right. please. And another team with a non red that would be great. Uh, I'm trying to blow through this because we're running out of time. Uh, it's fast track. Fast track. Yep. Okay. Uh, and he was wondering, and then let's see, sketchy says, uh, maybe you should do a stream with Peter Volterna comics. Uh, maybe, but this is, uh, this is not my art show right now. Uh, for those that don't know, we do this power ranger stuff, action activate. And uh, as Gaz bought myself, I'm an artist and do comics and stuff like that. And a lot of power ranger fan art. Um, and I'm actually, we're actually in the process of making these channels separate. So if you're watching this on Gazbot right now, this is one of the last action activate things you will see on the Gazbot channel. There is an action activated dedicated channel that is up. Um, and I would please ask you to go subscribe there because, and you can stay on Gazbot too, obviously, uh, but <laughs> don't just all, leave. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, you can unsubscribe if you feel the need to, but Gazbot is going to be art, my vlog, just, just me. I mean, big dog might show up or something, but all the power Rangers pop culture stuff that action activate does the Toku stuff is going to be on the action activate channel. And we're sort of in the middle of migrating that now. So, uh, having Peter, well, and, and sketchy, uh, I don't know if you mean Peter, I, I mean, I assume you mean Peter Semetti, who I don't know. I don't have like an in with him. I have some friends that work for Alterna. Uh, maybe you mean Peter Palmiati, uh, who is a friend of mine who I, did he work for Alterna? I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, I, I would be into doing something like that on the Gazbot channel, but not the Action Activity channel because it wouldn't make sense. Unless, unless he's a big Power Rangers fan. What? Didn't you post this on both? This video, if I did it right, should be going on both YouTube channels. Then yes. that's why. But, okay. But yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, actually, but that would be a fun crossover if some comic person was a big Power Rangers fan and wanted it kind of like we're talking about horror and Power Rangers crossing over like, hey, you know, worlds colliding, if it makes sense, sure, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then Gabby, I don't know why Power Rangers sensors bullets or replace them with laser beams. Laser beams are more destructive than bullets because kids can't get a laser gun because we don't see lasers in real life, I'm guessing. There's like more of a disconnect. They did yeah. that with the old G.I. Joe cartoon in the 80s too. It's yeah. Just like, it's, Transformers, it's a, same thing. Yeah, well, Transformers are aliens, so it made more sense. But like, yeah, G.I. Joe shot the same lasers that the Transformers did. That made no sense, but whatever. Um, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Uh Hey, it's Dolly Girl. What's up? Haven't talked to you in quite a while. But yeah, feel free to follow them both. Um, and what's going on now is if I'm doing it right, it's streaming on Action Activate and on Gazbot. Yeah. But when it's over, I'm not going to keep it posted on Gazbot. I'll only keep it's it going. Action Activate. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys think a female worth female? Uh, I don't care. I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. If I would like one... a female red, sure. If people don't like it, I don't care. Yeah, same. I, I think Lauren was a prime example of like, yes. many would argue she was better than Jaden. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't, yeah. The, the, the t- I don't want to get political. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get political. Yeah, my 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 reasons have nothing to do with it. If there's one thing we talked about, Time Force got brought up nine different times. She wasn't the Red Ranger. She was the right. leader. She was great. And, if you sw- and, if you switch the colors, t- it wouldn't have mattered. And Taylor on Wild Force could have been a good leader. Yeah, like there's no reason a female can't be a good leader, and we'll just leave it at that. How about that? Exactly. Um, and let's see. Ox says, "Big Dog always shows up." I don't know if you missed the story of him meeting all the big celebrities at parties and such. That's true. That is true. <laughs> no, that one. Uh, th- this is one of those, uh, you know, metaphorical hair flip moments. A hundred percent being sarcastic, by the way. But uh, my uh, my junior and senior year, I acted alongside her in our drama class, and it was very clear then she takes this very seriously and is very good at this. I am getting a B plus, probably <laughs> a B plus. That's pretty good. I don't know, but we were. Uh, my, I'll check my Instagram. Sorry if I missed a message. Um, and then. Oh, Ox is saying hi to Dolly. Yeah, Dolly, good. Thanks for hanging yeah, out. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Dolly was around back when I was doing total Twitch requests live when I was doing sketches. Yep. And then Matt says it was a Disney thing where they were censoring bolts with SPD. Who knows why, though? Yeah. Yeah, Who even with fun? Time Force, everybody used lasers. Yeah, but again, that kind of made sense. Oh, but yeah. did the Silver Centurions use lasers too? Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, I think I. Forgetting about the specifics of the situation, I think it's just a way to put another layer of fantasy to yep. remove it from the real world. For it's why everybody sparks and rarely bleeds. Yeah, <laughs> rarely bleeds. I bleed sparks, but that's because I'm a gas bug. That's I fair. I uh, I bleed nothing because my skin is impenetrable. As a big <laughs> <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. We didn't plan it. Thanks for everybody for showing up in the live. If you're watching it later, feel free to comment below. Let us know what's going on. Um, it. The old videos for Action Activate are staying up on the Gazbot channel. I'm not going to just yep. delete them. There's a playlist on the new one. I might migrate a few, but it's such a thing. Um, and Matt has been going through a lot of the old, um, uh, I want to say Ryu Soldier, Dino Fury uh, videos and putting very detailed information. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, I've been having a hard time keeping up, to be honest, but I appreciate that you're doing it. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, until next time, though, I have been Gazbot. Still the big dog. And to the power. To the power. Now I need to find end credits. End credits. Here they are. So now I got to figure out uh, what I'm going to watch later. If I'm going to stay on the Toku train or if I'm going to watch one of these uh, train. one of these animated shows that you highly recommend. Uh, well, again, I'm not. E- I, I I would be reluctant to say Infinity Train is the best. It's something that I'm hyped on right now, obviously. But it is such a low time. Period, you know, if you watch the first season and don't like it, you're done. Don't don't yeah. keep going. You know, and, Ooh, and that's only whatever hundred minutes. I don't know if you and uh, the misses do like a movie night or whatever, but if you haven't seen everything, everywhere, oh, all yeah, at that's, once, that's on the list of things to watch. Haven't got around. Highly to. recommend yeah, it. I will watch it 100. percent Just haven't gotten to it. I think we were going to watch it the other night but it wasn't streaming yet or it was we would have to pay 20 bucks and we didn't feel like yeah doing it, but. but that's also to everybody else please watch it it's so good i cried three times the last movie i watched uh was dr strange no i saw jurassic park uh last weekend how and, was it uh what you'd expect <laughs> get what the team mean? together rar i will say this um uh what's his name dr malcolm yeah. What's his name? Uh, he Jeff, was the Goldblum. Best friend. Jeff Goldblum was the best friend. Oh, yeah. I know we're still streaming, Seth. Thanks. We uh, we often talk after the credits uh, on our normal shows. So we're doing it here, too. Th- this oh, is yeah. that kind of like if you're, you know, really staying here, you might get a little bit extra, or you're just going to hear us talk about things that just have nothing to do with anything so else we Jurassic talk about. Jurassic Park, uh, not necessarily recommending it, but I guess if you're going to see it, the big screen is better. Jeff Goldblum is hilarious. Uh, the, the last movie I watched in my house, Star Trek V. Star Trek Five, the least popular Star Trek movie there is. In right. your heart? Uh, no, generally speaking, it's it's it is or is one of the least popular like bad Star Trek movies. But there's the a, subtitle of it. Uh, the Quest Final for... Frontier. It's the one that oh, where, where they look for God, and then oh, okay. Chatter directed it. And there's a lot of um, uh, 
substantial. There, there's a lot of critiques that are correct, uh, but I think it gets more hate than it deserves. And this is a spoiler for those that haven't seen it. Uh, although if you care at all about Star Trek, you've probably seen it at this point. There's a, a scene where there's the, the the villain is this guy who could like take away your pain, you know, and he like he like works you through it, and then you're like, oh, I love you because you're my pain, and he's doing this to everybody, and he gets to Kirk, and this is like certain stuff gets me like like right in my brain, it gets me really weirdly emotional, and in the middle of this mediocre movie, he's talking about Kirk and all the horrible stuff he's gone through, and he's like, let me take it. He's like, no, I don't want you to take my pain. I need my pain. I want my pain. It helps me be who I am, and I, I need it. And I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> and that scene makes the whole movie worthwhile to me. <laughs> and it, it's like that's who Kirk is. And like, eh, maybe that's who I am too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just need that little little ouchy. <laughs> All right, we're going. really gonna go. I think that Matt's Frank review of late. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. What are you gonna do? I almost saw Top Gun, and I was like, I don't know anything about Top Gun. Never saw the first one. I should just see the dinosaur movie. <laughs> dinos be dinos. All right, we gotta go. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Later.